part of SeaWorld's mission is more than just a job. We are proud of what we do. And it is a privilege for us to care for, build relationships with, teach, and learn from these amazing animals. Now more than ever, we are honored to share our relationships with the whales and what we've learned with all of you. And now, SeaWorld proudly presents Orca Encounter!
You like it? Like it? Thank you. Oh. These are the rails are active and engaged. Single killer rails have inspired generations around the world, and we're excited to share their stories with you today. Killer whales are the ocean's top predator. They use cooperation and communication, not just size and strength, to take their place at the top of the ocean's floor. At the bottom are small animals, like krill. At the top, the apex predator, the killer whale. Killer whales are as big as a bus, faster than an Olympic We spent days, weeks, months, years building relationships with our whales. This creates trust, and that allows us to do some amazing things. For example, when you visit the doctor, you present your arm to draw blood, or you step on the scale to see how much you weigh. It's much the same with our whales. Today, you'll see the whales moving together in unison. These synchronized behaviors strengthen social bonds and enable them to problem solve as Working together as a team is what makes them the ocean's top predator. Scientifically known as the sinus orca, commonly referred to as killer whales. Here at SeaWorld, we know that the Lonia, Trua, and Makai are killer whale Makai is the youngest whale, and the oldest is Makai's mother, Katina. She's the matriarch, or leader, of our pod. SeaWorld's animal training techniques create a language us and the whales. It's a language of learning through positive reinforcement, encouragement, commitment, and care. Through these techniques and our relationships, the whales learn to trust us. They even learn to take an active role in their very own health and well-being. Now here at SeaWorld, we're able to train many voluntary husbandry or health care behaviors. But one of the very first husbandry behaviors that we train is the position in which we could ask for a voluntary blessing. The whales learn to roll that shoulder upside down and present their tail flips, just like Lily is demonstrating here. Not only does this give us an excellent look at the entire whale, but it also gives us access to blood vessels that can be easily seen on the white underside of their tail flips. Our veterinarians collect a blood sample at least once a month, and the whales are trained to remain calm and relaxed throughout the entire procedure. Now as trainers were frequently rubbing down and massaging the whales, whether on their backs, control flippers, or tail flips. The whales have very sensitive skin, and this is just one way that we can reward the whales from remaining calm during procedures like this. It's also a great way for us to strengthen our relationships with the whales. Now, blood samples are just one way that we can make sure our whales are staying healthy. Another important diagnostic is weighing the whales. We're able to weigh the whales by asking them to slide their bodies out of the water and onto a killer whale size scale located on the bottom. Here we can demonstrate this in our slide out. Now when Milani slides up, you'll notice that a portion of her body from her dorsal fin to her tail steps still in the water. This is the powerhouse of the killer whale. It's called the pinocle and it's very heavy and very muscular. Now with the pinocle still in the water, we would not be getting an accurate weight. So we're able to solve that problem by simply asking them to lift their tails up and out of the water. Wow. And the care isn't just physical. Mental stimulation and play are vital, and we surprise and engage with our whales at every opportunity. Play is how killer whales teach their young to hunt. For the adults, play is important too. It seems that they just enjoy having fun. Making time for play is an important part of life for killer whales and for us. the killer whales love to play, they actually learn a lot by playing and through mimicry and observational learning. From a young age, killer whales learn important life skills by playing games such as follow the leader with their mother and other whales. And we're going to put that to the test today with all of you and our killer whale family. So on the side of the stadium, go ahead and stand up. We're going to play a game of killer whale follow the leader. You will be the leader and Lily will follow. So on the count of three, you'll take both hands and raise them high. 
going over your plan for the tour. That's right, my plan. Why don't you take it out and tell everyone what's next on it? What's next on the plan? Yep. Otters. Otters is next. No, I thought otters was later in the day. They all want to see otters! Well, they seem super excited for otters, so if that's what the plan says, then otters it is. Why don't we just see if Opie and his friend would like to come out and join us? Oh, oh and joining us is Paige! And of course, Paige is with Opie, a very curious mammal. Uh, he actually has partially wet paws shown right there in that diagram that allow him to swim, grasp, and carry objects. Yeah, oh, that's just like that plan for the tour. Uh, were you seeing something? Look how cute Opie is! Oh, well, yes, Opie is adorable. He's an Asian small clawed otter, which is the smallest of the 13 species. So even though Opie looks for a little, he's actually full grown, just weighing seven pounds. Wow, what, what is Opie eating? So Opie is eating some fish and capelin, which is the variety of the diet that they have here. Wow. Oh, it looks like they're giving us a wave. Come on, let's give a round of applause for Opie and Paige. Yeah, let's give a round of applause for that little thief. A thief? I don't get it. Um, well, aren't otters thought to be mischievous? Oh, well, yes, otters are known to be quite mischievous. But here at the center, we love them. Did you know that they're listed as protected species? So here at the center, we make sure they thrive and survive. Wait, wait, wait. So what you're saying is each and every one of us otter do our part to protect them? me, Clyde, this next part of the tour. Anything for you, Dr. Zootopia. It's a lofus. That's what I said. Okay. Here at the center, we have been studying the food sources and the eating behaviors of the animals here in our care. This allows us to understand and help sustain wild populations. For this next part, I will need help from a young volunteer. You had your hand right up. Come on down. Hello. What's your name? Harper, where are you from? Ah. All the way from America! Oh, hi, Harper. Come on over here. Now, you look like you want to feed my buddy Clyde, right? Of course you do. That's why you volunteered. I'm going to have you stand right here because he's going to come out any minute now. And this is packed with all the nutrients that he needs. Have you ever fed a sea lion before? No? This will be your first time. So this is going to be the cake when we're going to get in. And you said you're from America. What part of America are you from? Around here. So you're from Florida. Good to know. So you probably have a fantasy line. So this is Clyde. And you're going to take it just like this. And you're going to do a big toss for me. Excellent job. Let's go one more because you are catching on pretty fast. Excellent job, Barbara. Come over here. We're going to get a picture because you were amazing. And he's gonna come up here, and he's gonna pose for us, and you're gonna come right here. Put your hand on that flipper. Take a look at everyone. And, uh, oh, that's a big yawn. On the uh, count of three, we are gonna yell sardines real loud. One, two, three, sardines! Excellent job, you guys. Give it up for my youngest trainer. I bet that's fine, right? Yes, Neutron, very observant. And it's Dr. Zalophus. That's what I said. Ugh, never mind. We have already started the day and we have yet to start testing your pinniped knowledge. So question number one, how tall would you say sea lions are? Well, looking at him, I'd say three, maybe four feet tops. Check again. Check again. Huge. Well, yes, sea lions can actually grow up to nine feet in length. Oh, My wow. favorite fun fact is they actually have three tiny toenails in those rear flippers to get those hard to reach spots. Fine, you have toenails either, I can see them. Okay. Oh, I can see them. Oh, I can smell that in too, bud. Well, Clyde is showing he was a very social animal. We found they have their own personalities, likes, and dislikes. He really seems to like hanging out with me. You guys are adorable. He's also been very motivated in interacting with us and part 
participating in his own health care. If you don't mind, I'm going to take him to go find Seymour. Why don't you help yourself to a complimentary refreshment? Oh, thanks, Dr. Xerox. Copy that. I am pretty thirsty, so drink sounds amazing right now. In these um, Newt, you're on your brakes over. Uh oh, the can. pectoral muscles to help him jump high into the waters. Now, Seymour, whenever you're ready, let's show everyone just how high you can jump. All right, let's go for one, two, three. Excellent job. Well, now he's going to use those powerful front flippers up and down like a bird to gain speed. Show everyone how fast you can swim. Okay, round of applause for Seymour! Yeah. That was the best demonstration I have seen all day. So why don't you take this protein snack and head back this way. Um, Neutron, I have that second question for you. Yeah, what is it, Dr. Zaxby's? It's a low face. That's what I said. <laughs> question number two, uh, how fast would you say sea lions swim? Ooh, I got this. Uh, Tinson, Tinson, Tinson! No. What I meant was why don't you see if Clyde can demonstrate how fast he can swim. Why didn't you say that earlier? Okay, fine. Why don't you go into the water just like Seymour did, and I need you to use those really powerful pectoral muscles and swim. Wait, what is that? No, John! Okay! That's not quite what I had in mind. It's not what I had in mind either. You know, but it looks like Clyde got you there. It is your first day, so it's all right. I have an idea. Why don't you just lead this next part of the tour all by yourself? All by myself? Thanks, Dr. Zach Efron. I thought we were all in this together. <sighs> okay, Clyde, Doc still doesn't know that we lost the plan, so we need to look for it. So how about we go back to the basics? Do you remember when you were pop? You used to mimic your mom's each and every move. Well, I'll be the mom, you be the pup. Follow my each and every move and stay close behind. Send out an 
APB in all Pinna Pen Bulletin. How about this? In the meantime, why don't you two come up with a plan to, I don't know, find my plan? Yeah, you got it, Dr. Ziploc. Okay, fine, we got this. You have a head, I have a head. I think the best thing we should do is put our heads together. Clyde, come back here, back. <laughs> Great idea, Clyde. Let's split up. You go that way like you wanted to. I'll go over here where I put the plan before the otter took it. Did you just say an otter took my plan? I mean, maybe. Right here, what happened? I don't know. Wait, there's the otter. Send up the signal, everyone after that otter! Woo! Attention, attention! Everyone in the Marine Conservation Center, all hands and flippers on deck. Be on the lookout for Opie Otter. He has stolen the tour itinerary and must be located immediately. Seymour, thank you so much for responding to that APB. Neutron say that the otter took the plan. So we're gonna have to come up with a great idea. Let's search for him. Oh, yes, check down there and then don't forget to check this side of the center. We have so much to cut. You can't breathe out of that end. Coochie coochie coo. Are you afraid of only the otter? Why? He's only seven pounds. You know what? Let's go check in the back for him.
During the presentation, please exit to the back of the theater. And number three, if you need to number one or number two, restrooms are located outside of the center. Thank you.
hope to inspire a young SeaWorld guest in much the same way that many of us were inspired on our very first trips here to SeaWorld. So today I have joining me this young man. Hi there, what's your name? Maverick, it's so nice to meet you, Maverick. Where are you from? He's visiting us all the way from Michigan. Let's give him a very big SeaWorld welcome. All right, Maverick, well today you're gonna help me show the audience how we build bonds and relationships with the dolphins that we take care of here every single day. Now, one of my friends is gonna be making his way out here. We have six different pools up here at Dolphin Stadium, and they're all connected by underwater doorways. And it looks like one of our friends made it out here. He's gonna come over here. Let's take a couple more steps up to him, all the way up to this 24-foot drop-off matter. Perfect. <laughs> when we met, we shook hands, and that is a great way to meet a dolphin. So you're gonna put your hand out, he's gonna come up, and you get to shake his flipper. Maverick meet Phil. Phil meet Maverick.
Yeah. You like show? What yeah. You? Are you ready to see some more? Yeah. Well, that is great to hear because we still have a whole lot more for you to discover. But discoveries can also lead to risk. Dolphins are innately curious animals, and in the ocean, this can lead them to exploring polluted areas or even to playing with trash. So, what can we do to help? Simple things can have a big impact. We can recycle, join a beach cleanup, properly dispose of fishing line and plastic bottles, or even better yet, we can choose reusable items and reduce the amount of waste we produce. It's small actions like these that can go a really long way to protecting ocean life. Sarah and I are just two of over 350 zoological professionals here on the SeaWorld team. Collectively, we not only provide world-class care for these dolphins, but have facilitated the rescue of over 40,000 animals with the goal of rehabilitating and returning them to their natural habitat. And none of this would be possible without all of you. Your visit today matters, and without your support, we wouldn't be able to do this good work and save wildlife that needs our help. So, on behalf of the entire SeaWorld team, we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When we care for our world and take action on behalf of the animals that call it home, that's part of a legacy we're leaving behind. And that legacy is worth Ooh.
My name is Luke, and today we'll be going on an adventure that celebrates the Bobby Nose Dolphin. It's our hope that you leave here today knowing a whole lot more about these amazing animals and how to respect the oceans and waterways we share with them.